Good morning, Life Fellowship. Everybody doing well? Good morning. Uh, good morning. All of you that are with us online, man, we're thrilled you have joined us. Uh, if you're on Facebook, hit the share button. Come on, spread the word far and wide. All of you men in the correctional institutions, we're thrilled to have all of you with us online today. You know, I think this is, I, I went back and I counted up, I think this is the 14th or 15th time that I've been here and been able to speak to you, and uh, always a thrill to come to Dallas to see our son, his family, and then to be with the family of God at Life Fellowship. Great to be here. Though my wife and I, we live in Memphis, we closely follow what is happening here at Life Fellowship. You know, the Bible says this, Habakkuk chapter 2. God says there's going to come a time that the righteousness of God, the knowledge of God, it's going to cover the world like the waters cover the sea. Uh, I think we're seeing some of that in our day and age today. Do you realize that today 16,000 Africans will give their life to Jesus Christ in the continent of Africa, and then 16,000 tomorrow and 16,000 the next day. South America, the number jumps to 18,000 people every day giving their life to Christ. Asia, 21,000 people giving their life to Jesus every single day of the week. Uh, I praise God for what he is doing right here in the greater North Dallas area, and then what God is doing through Life Fellowship, outreach around the world. And my word to you is keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Just go on up higher. I know the church that I'm privileged to serve, uh, over the last eight years, we have built seven uh, churches around the world, two in Benin, West Africa. One of those two has so exploded in growth, they've already spun out uh, three other churches that are booming as well. So we begun two in Benin, West Africa. We begun three in the communist country of, Ch of, of, of um, uh, Cuba. And those churches are blowing and going in the island nation of Cuba. We began another one in the, um, in the, um, um, the country of Myanmar. Some of you know it as Burma. Um, very, very... A pagan nation, and the gospel is going forth. Then another one in Thailand. We just completed a Bible institute in Thailand, and now they opened their doors just a couple days ago. 150 young men and women studying to be Bible teachers, pastors, evangelists. And now January 1, we're going to go to Bangladesh, and uh, <clears throat> we'll start another church in the poorest nation of the world, Bangladesh, and praise God, there will be people in heaven one day that you and I will meet because of your outreach through Life Fellowship and what we do. Uh, Chris, you mentioned about Haiti, you mentioned about New, uh, you mentioned about New Orleans, and, and all the other hot spots of the world. Hey folks, hear me well. Bad times in the world spell great times for the church. Bad times in the world spell great times for the church. When you go look at a diamond ring, they put that against a black backdrop in the jewelry store, black velvet, and then that jewel shines all the better. And bad times in the world are great times for the church of Jesus Christ. I can't wait for what the next week holds. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's talk about this topic today. Let's talk about this. How can you one day hear well done from Jesus Christ. Ever thought about that topic? How can you live your life now so one day when you stand before him, and you will, how can you hear well done? Let me tell you a story. Area of the city where I grew up in a boy, as a boy was a, was a fast growing area, many new homes being built. And uh, one of the big builders was Art Eberly. My dad knew him well because he built the home that my dad bought that I grew up in as a boy. When I was 10 years of age, there wasn't much more fun that a boy could have. I and my neighborhood school buddies during summer vacation, we would, uh, we would get near where they were constructing a house and we'd watch the big dump trucks come in and we'd watch the bulldozers push the dirt. And uh, I remember one day we were sitting at the edge of the street watching and uh, Mr. Eberly saw me and he called me over, son, come here, come here, come here, son. He said, I need you to do something for me. He said, you know where Shebe's Hardware is? I said, yes, sir. Been in it many times with my dad. Here, take this note down to Shebe's Hardware. 
Give it to Mr. Shebe. He's going to give you some supplies that we need. We ran out of some supplies. Bring them back. Would you do that for me, son? Oh, I said, Mr. Eberly, you can count on me. I hopped on my nice 26-inch red Schwinn bike. And off I went about a mile to Shebe's hardware. I walked in. I gave Mr. Shebe the note. He looked at it. He said, son, you stay right here. He went over here in the store and here. He put things together in a bag. He says, here they are. Get them back to Mr. Eberly. I rode my 26-inch red Schwinn bike as fast as I could back to the job site. And when Mr. Eberly saw me come, he walked down. I gave him the bag. He looked inside. And he put his hand on my head. I was 10 years old. He looked right in my eye and said, thank you. Job well done. I really appreciate you helping me, son. Oh, man, I felt 10 feet tall. (laughs) A build. Mr. Eberly had said, thank you. He said, I'm going to reward you. I thought I was going to get a candy bar. I got better than a candy bar. He said, I'm going to let you ride. The next time I have to go get dirt, I'm going to have you ride shotgun next to me right in my big old dump truck. Hey, for a 10-year-old boy, that's a big deal to ride in a dump truck. But I heard from Mr. Eberly, well done. And man, that made my week when he said, well done. Well, how do you hear well done? Not from Mr. Eberly, but from Jesus Christ. How do you hear? How do you live your life now so you can hear that? See, one day, all of us are going to stand before God. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Just erase every question mark. You'll be there. I'll be there. And 1 Corinthians 4 tells us what's going to happen. Look what's going to happen on that day. God will bring our darkest secrets to light and and will reveal our private motives. Let that sink in. And then God will give to each one the praise that is due. So we'll stand before God. He'll examine our deepest secrets and our private motives. And then everybody's going to hear one of three things. There's only three options. One of three things. Depart from me, I never knew you. I don't want that one. How about you? Next one, you're going to get into heaven, but by the skin of your teeth. Not much reward because you kind of squandered your life and you didn't do much with it. Or you're going to hear what Jesus said in Matthew 25. Here's what I want to hear right here, Matthew 25. His master said to him, well done, thumbs up, you're a good and faithful servant. Remember Mr. Eberly patting me, well done, son, well done. I'd rather hear that from God than anybody else. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of responsibility and authority And now enter into the joy of your master. That's what I want to hear. How about you? Let me you want to hear that? Let me see your hand. That's what I want to hear from God. Okay, now everybody, every child of God can hear that. It's available, but it's not automatic. So how do we live our lives now? the 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years that we have here on planet Earth, how do we live our lives now so that then we will hear those words, well done? We don't have to guess. We don't have to grope around saying, well, let's flip a coin. I think, no, no, no. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us. So today, as your spiritual coach, Let me coach you and show you how to receive that well done. Three questions. Three questions. Question number one you need to ask and answer for yourself is this. What's my character? Say it with me. What's my character? Come on, say it again louder. What's my character? Now, let's be crystal clear. Crystal clear. Time out. Nobody is saved because they got a great character. There will be people that stand before Jesus one day that have brilliant characters, but they're going to hear, I never knew you. You you, you paid your taxes. You lived within the speed limits. You were faithful to your husband, your wife. You were good at your job, but I never had a relationship with you. Nobody is saved by character. Amen? Amen? By grace, through faith, we're saved. And that not of ourselves. If I could be saved by my character, it would be of me. I can build a great character, but we're not saved by ourselves. I could boast about a great character, but we're not 
saved by character. Though we're not saved by it, once we are saved, God wants us to build a Christ-like character, and then one day he will reward you for establishing and building a Christ-like character. Got it? The 50, 60 years, the 30 years, however old you were when you came to Jesus, and however much time after that you have left, should the Lord tarry. He, he wants us to build a Christ-like character, and then he'll reward us for doing that. Hey, has it ever occurred to you? You're not going to take your career to heaven. You will take your character. You're not going to take your income to heaven. You'll take your integrity. You're not going to take your college degrees to heaven. You'll take your devotion. And God's going to reward all those things. Now, where do you start? Galatians chapter 5 is a great place to start. Look at the verse. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And then nine big biblical quality character traits are listed. Those are what, that, that's a great start. That's a foundation right there to put those quality traits in your life. Notice they're called fruit. Hey, do, do, does fruit grow overnight? Do you plant an apple seed in the morning and eat apples that night? No, no, no. It, it's, a, it's a process. You build a Christ-like character over the duration of your life. It's fruit. It, it develops. And if you fail, if you fall down, when that happens, when you stumble, notice I didn't say if you stumble, when you stumble, when you fall, come on, get back up and go on. Get back up and put that mistake behind you and say, God, okay, I made a mistake, but God, one of the, one of the, characteristics I want to develop is endurance that when I slip, fall, and fail, I don't stay down. Hey, listen to me. Everybody fails and falls. Every person fails and falls. Great people get up and go on. Get that, get that, get that. Don't doubt me. Everybody fails and falls. Great people get up and go on. Hey, it takes a lifetime to build the character that God wants in our life. And you can do it. Um, look at this verse out of 2 Peter. If anybody had character flaws when they first met Jesus, it was Peter. Man, wishy-washy. He, he had a roller coaster type of personality. He was strong one moment, weak the next. Uh, and, and God needed to build his character. So when Peter talked about character, he knew what he was talking about. Look what he said in his book. So my dear brothers and sisters, I love that God calls us you dear brothers and sisters. I love that God calls me a, a dear brother, you a dear sister. My dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you're really among those that God has called and chosen. And then he says, if you do the things that he just talked about, I'll come back to that in a moment. If you do those things, you will never fall away. Look what he then says next. God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the five verses just before these few verses that I've read for you, uh, Peter lists seven quality traits, characteristics that God wants us to put in our life. And he says, you do these things, you'll never fall, you'll never fail, you'll be strong. And beyond that, one day God is going to welcome you into his heavenly kingdom. Remember, character doesn't save us, but God's going to reward character. So the first question you've got to ask yourself, all you online, men in the correctional institutes, you here in the worship center, what's my character? Am I building a Christ-like character? Am I more like Jesus today than I was a month ago, six months ago? Am I going upward in him? That's what I need to do. Paul said the same thing to Timothy about that, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Paul said to him, Timothy, cultivate these things, these, these, these characters, uh, traits of your life. Cultivate them. You know what cultivate is. You go out in the garden and you plant and you, you cultivate it. You pull the weeds and you water, you fertilize. You cultivate the plant. Cultivate your character. Immerse yourself in them. 
like, like a swimming pool. Just jump in. Don't dip your toe in the water and say, let me see if I want to try this out. No, no. Dive in there. Immerse yourself in. Let people see your life mature right in front of them. Look at this. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't let it go. Don't let it go because one day God is going to reward character. God is going to reward character. And it says both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. You know, during communion, we took time to pray for for families, Nash blessed families. I prayed over families for legacies. You know what? Um, Out in California right now, we're, we're seeing terrible, terrible forest fires. Devastation. I've got friends that live out there. Homes are, thousands of homes have already been lost. And people are now returning to their once beautiful home, and now they find nothing but a pile of ash heaps. Nothing but a pile of ashes. That's all they find. Hey, everybody, let's not let our kids, let's not leave our kids nothing but a pile of spiritual ashes. Amen? Let's leave our kids a foundation, some character traits that they can hold on to and they can build. Uh, I've said many times in the church I pastor, Sandy and I have three kids and our goal has always been that my son Chris, my son John, our daughter Amy, whatever I have done in the kingdom of God, my two boys will exceed me. Whatever Sandy has done in the kingdom of God, our daughter Amy will exceed us and we're seeing it happen. Because I don't want to leave spiritual ashes for my kids. I want to leave a firm, strong foundation. And God's going to reward character. First question, what's my character? You got it? Question number two, what's my contribution? Say it with me. What's my contribution? Say it one more time, loud. What's my contribution? Hey, think of everything God's given you. Everything God's given me. I scribbled down a few things. Abilities, personalities, experiences, money, material things, spiritual gifts, prayer, supernatural power, education. I could go on and on. What are you doing with all that? What are you doing with everything God has given to you? What are you doing with it? One day we're going to stand before God. He'll ask, who's in your heart And what did you do with what I put in your hands? Who's in your heart? Is Jesus there? And everything I put into your hands, what'd you do with it? Did you spend it on me, myself, and I, only your family? Oh, so unwise. Or did you invest it in God's work? Did you help build the kingdom? Did you encourage others? Did you build up others? Oh, so many times the Bible talks about do this for one another, one another, one another. What did you do with your abilities that God gave you, natural and spiritual, your personality, your experiences, your money? You realize you could have been born in Afghanistan? We're gonna, next church we're going to build the poorest country of the world, Bangladesh. You could have been born in Bangladesh instead of living here in North Dallas. What are you doing with everything God's put into your hands? Hey, imagine it like this. Picture it like this. Let me borrow your imagination. I'll give it back. Let me borrow your imagination. You own a small business, 20 employees, and uh, you've got to take a six-month business trip to Europe. You gather your 20 employees, and you say, uh, I've got to be gone for six months. You run the business while I'm gone. You take off, down, go down to DFW, you fly to London, and then you hop from country to country. Six months later, you fly back, and you come back to your business. Of your 20 employees, 17 of them, they've been having their feet up on the desk drinking Starbucks. All day long watching Netflix. Uh, Crumpling up wads of paper and seeing how many baskets they can make in the wastebasket. 17 have done that. Three of them, man, they've worked hard. They've kept your business going. They've made orders that, orders that have come in. They've got them shipped out. They've kept the cash flow going. They've made sure all the taxes are paid. Three of them did that. Question for you. Are you going to reward everybody the same? Are you going to reward the 17 the way that you reward the three? Are you going to give the three the same 
thanks, benefit, bonus that you give the 17? I hope not. I hope not. And God's the same way. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, we need to give it all we've got. Um, Finish the work God's called you to do. Amen? That's what Jesus said. John chapter 17. This would have been on Thursday night after we had done, after he had done the Last Supper. He went out through the southern gate of Jerusalem and he he winded his way through the Kidron Valley. He went halfway up the Mount of Olives, took a left as I've done before, and there's the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he knelt and he prayed. And one of the things he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane is this, oh God, I brought you glory here on earth. I did it by completing the work that you called me to do. I completed what you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the joys that I once had with you. Bring me into the eternal heavens. I finished my work. Hey, When God's given you abilities and God's given you experiences, God's given you spiritual gifts, God's given you money, God's given you material things, everything that God has given, use that, finish the work to which he has called you, and then one day he's going to receive you into eternal glory and say, well done. Be like Jesus. Finish the work. Amen? Amen. Hey, let me drop a word in to all the men that are here especially the fathers and soon-to-be fathers. Uh, When I was in my mid-20s, I had two young sons, your pastor being one of them. I had two young sons. God moved on me. He said, Tom, I want you to make a... uh, He moved me to say, I want you to make a contribution to your family. I said, Lord, how? He said, I want you to put Sandy, your wife, your children's mother, I want you to make her a priority. I want you, he said, the greatest thing you can do for your sons, a daughter came along later, the greatest thing you can do for your children is to love their mother, honor their mother, and let that be visible and let that be seen. And I said, God, will you helping me, I will do just that. I will honor her. Now, I, I never put Sandy number one. Sandy doesn't want to be number one in my life. Sandy wants to be number two in my life because she knows that if I have Jesus number one in my life, I'll be a much better husband. I'll be a much better father when Jesus is number one and she's number two. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God moved upon me. And when I was in my mid-20s, I want you to contribute to your family by making sure that your wife, your children's mother, is numero uno in in your life, and they see it. I said, oh, God, with you helping me, I will do just that. You know, the Apostle Paul, toward the very end of his life, look what he said, 2 Timothy. "Uh, As for me, my life is already being poured out as an offering to God. Time of my death is very, very near. Yep. And then he said this, I fought a good fight. I finished I finished the race. I've done what you've called me to do. Remember, we're talking about what's my character. I've built a good character. What's my contribution? I've contributed, and I've remained faithful. And now a prize awaits me. A prize awaits me. I've done over 500 funerals in my ministry. I've seen both sides of the scale. I've seen both sides where there's been that faithful person and a prize awaits them. And I've been at the other extreme too where I know the person kind of, they were a believer, but they squandered their life. Even their family knew it. I've done over 500 funerals. And I've, I've seen the difference. Let there be a contribution to the kingdom of God. And let me make you a promise. Anything you contribute to the kingdom of God your time, your personality, your education, your finances, your experiences, your prayer, anything that you uh, contribute to the kingdom of God, it will have deep, lasting roots. Sometimes it'll outlive you. Let me tell you a story. Deep roots, deep roots. Let me tell you a story. Man had to go to the dentist to get a tooth pulled. He was very, very fearful about getting this tooth pulled. He told the dentist, he said, I don't even want to open my mouth. Let you get in there. Dentist called his chair side assistant over and said, come here, come here, come here. 
When I wink at you, reach down and pinch his hip as strong as you're able to pinch. You just really squeeze it. He'll open his mouth and I'll pull the tooth. <laughs> Dennis looked at his chair side assistant, wink, she pinched, he screamed. Dennis went in, yanked it out, tooth got out, and the dentist said, see, that wasn't so bad. The man went, no, it wasn't, but I didn't know tooth roots go that deep. <laughs> I didn't know the roots of teeth go that deep. Let me tell you, when you contribute to the kingdom of God, roots go down deep, 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 deep. Deep, 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 deep. They go way, way down. Way down. My life is about to end, Paul said. I've finished, I've finished. Now look up here, everybody. Look at me. The Bible is so clear. Don't doubt me what I say next. Most rewards that you will get will not be here on earth. They'll be in heaven. The overwhelming majority of rewards, God's going to deal out in heaven. Well done. Well, we get some blessings now. Oh, some big blessings. But they won't, they won't hold a candle to the rewards we're going to one day get in heaven because of our character and because of our contribution. One more. What's the character of my life? What's the con contribution of my life? One more. Say it with me. What's the center of my life? Say it. What's the center of my life? So many good things in our world. Our, our world is fantastic. I've done some traveling all around the world. This world of ours blows my mind. And Solomon, who had a thousand wives, who knows how many kids he had, he wrote this to his children in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Look what he said to his kids. Young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But in all you're taking in, in everything you're doing in building your life, remember, you're one day going to give an account to God. Um, so many good things in our world. But none of them is strong enough to build your life on. Not a one of them is strong enough for me to build my life on. You need something stronger. You need a rock-solid center. Hey, I think I, know, I think I know one. His name is Jesus. I think I know one. I think I know one. Um, look at this verse out of 2 Chronicles chapter 14. There was a great, great king. A great king. His name was King Asa. Asa was a good king. He did the right things in the Lord's eyes. He told Judah. Now, we name our sons today Judah. A great name. It's a Hebrew word that means praise. But this isn't addressed to an individual. Judah was the southern kingdom. The king is saying to all the people underneath him, center your lives on God. And I say to all of you in the worship center, center your life on God. You'll never, you'll never regret it. All of you online, center your life on God. All of you in the Correctional Institute, guys, center your life on God. You'll never regret it. You never, and God will reward you. Now, follow me as we're kind of coming in for a landing, okay? When you surrender your life to Jesus, some are going to do that this morning. Some of you online, some in the correctional institutions. When you, when you, when you surrender, you give your life to Jesus, he moves into the very center of your life. Now, here's the key. You've got to keep him in the center of your life. He comes in the very center. Now, you keep him in the center of your life. All right? How do you know he's in the center of your life? You'll do way more worshiping than you'll do worrying. When problems come, you'll do way more praying than you will panicking. He's at the center of your life. The Lord's got me. The Lord's in charge. Hey, just, just imagine with me. Cast forward in your mind. That day that we get to heaven, oh, hallelujah. We just sang about it. We just sang about it. That day you get to heaven. Think of the implications of that day. What will you hear when you get to heaven? Well, you'll see Jesus, and you're going to hear this, Revelation chapter 4. Look what the Bible says you're going to hear. You're going to hear a, a, a crowd that nobody can number. Thou art worthy, O Lord. You're going to receive glory and honor and praise. You created all things, and for your pleasure, they're created. That's what you're going to hear. Oh, what a day that's going to be. i got a hunch you're going to join right in and say, Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy. That's what you will say to Jesus. What will Jesus say to you? 
what will Jesus say to you? Only three possibilities. Depart from me. I've never known you. You've never come to me. Two, come on into heaven, but I don't have just a, just a couple rewards for you because you kind of just live life for yourself. Or, oh, well done. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful for what I've given to you. Let me show you the privilege and, and, and what heaven is going to, and all of eternity is going to be in store for you. That's where I want to be. How about you? Amen. That's where I want to be. And I want to challenge you. Get all in with God. Build your character. Make it Christ-like. The contribution that you make. Come on, invest in the kingdom of God. And I'm not just talking money. I'm talking about your life, your time, your experience. Remember, you won't take your career to, uh, to heaven. You will take your character. Invest it in the kingdom. Make Jesus the center of your life. I'm talking to some right now here in the worship center online or... Um, in the Correctional Institute, that you've not yet built your life upon the rock of foundation of Jesus. You need to. You know what? You say, well, I can save myself. No, I'm sorry, you can't. There's over 7 billion people on planet Earth right now. If you, take, if you took the best out of every, all 7 billion, took the best out of every single one of them, and put them into me. I got the best of seven plus billion people put in me. I'm still not good enough to get to heaven without Jesus. Think of that. The best of seven billion people. The best character traits. Put it in one person. I'm still not sufficiently righteous to get to heaven. But through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I can come to him. I, was, I, I led a man to the Lord not long ago, and he, he was a little bit fearful. He said, but I'm going to give my life to Christ. Can I, can I stand? Will I make it? Look at this one last verse. Here's what I was able to tell him. Look, last verse, 1 first, first, first Corinthians, last verse. Look at it. He will keep you strong to the end. You give your life to Christ, he will keep you strong. And on that day, you'll be free from all blame on the day of Jesus Christ. All blame. God will do this. Not me. God will do this. He is faithful to do what he says. And then he's inviting you. I'm just, right now I'm going to invite you to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus today. I'm inviting exactly what the Bible says. He's invited you to come into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. And you can do that today. It's not hard to respond to an invitation. We get invitations all the time. Come to my birthday party. Come to our anniversary party. Come to our house on Labor Day. We're going to have a cookout. We get invitation all the time. The way you respond is, I will come. Don't complicate what God has simplified. Amen? Now I want to pray for you. Can I do that today? Can I pray for you here, you here, you over here to my left? Can I pray for all you uh, online? Can I pray, men, for you in the correctional institutions? Give your life to Jesus. Do it now, today. Let's pray. Let's pray. With your head bowed, how many are here in the worship center? You say, Pastor, would you pray for me today? I'm going to accept that invitation. I want to accept that invitation, and I want to give Jesus an eternal yes. Oh, God, come into my life. How many young people? You need to say, I want to do that right now. I'm, I've been coasting on my dad, my mom's faith. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, students here today, students, are you coasting on grandma's faith, your dad's faith? Come on, you've got to have a personal faith. You don't share toothbrushes with them. You can't share faith with them. Anybody else? Yep, God bless you. I see, yep, yep, God bless, sir. Yes, ma'am, God bless. I'm, I'm, I'm positive there's many online. I'm positive in the, in, the, in the correctional institutes, many online there. Let me pray for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for people's desire to know you. Thank you they're responding to the invitation. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Rest from sin because of forgiveness. So, Father... The four or five today in the worship center that lifted their hand, Lord, right now, draw near to them. Thank you, Lord, you're forgiving sin. All those online, the men in the correctional institutes, Lord, I pray they'll pray right now. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you came to earth. You willingly gave your life on the cross. You did not stay dead. Three days later, you came out of that grave. Now come into my life and change me. 
In Jesus' strong name, I thank you, Lord, for transforming lives today. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you today. Well done. Well done. Good, faithful servants. For those of you that you prayed that prayer, if you will, text the word fresh start to the number that we have there on the screen, and we want to send you some information so that we can journey with you. And we just want you to know that we are so proud of those of you that you, you're here or online that you prayed that prayer. You know, that's what this is all about. We're addicted to change lives around here. And it never, it never gets old. Never gets old. Ever. And I'm, I, I'm telling you, I am so fired up for what God is going to do this school year here in our church. Uh, next week, we're going to begin a brand new series entitled, You Drive Me Crazy. Okay, we're going to have some fun with that. We're going to talk about biblically, how do you deal with the manipulative people in your lives? How do you deal with the critical folks that are surrounded? We're going to talk about the crazy people and what does the Bible say about them? And <laughs> we're going to laugh a lot. You're going to learn a lot from Scripture so that you can not only deal with them, but point them to the Lord. And it, it's going to be, it could be my favorite series that we do all year long. And I say that every series, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So make sure that you're, you're here. And, and let me just say this one more thing. You know, when we do get to heaven someday and God gives you rewards, Dad read that scripture there that Paul made this statement. He said, there is laid up for me in heaven a crown of righteousness. Can I remind you that those crowns, and the Bible describes various different crowns that you'll receive, have the potential to receive. They're not just for an ornament. They're not just for decorations. There is levels of authority that God wants to give you in heaven. We read that scripture, it says to, when, when you've been faithful with little, God's going to make you ruler over much. So there is a reward coming to you someday, not just of, uh, who knows all the things that God has for us, but I do know that God is an extravagant rewarder. Very first thing that he says when he shows up, he says, I am coming and my reward is with me. Like he is so fired up to give you this reward, to bless us. And so let's live our lives for the king. Come on, everybody. Shine bright for the Lord. Let's shine bright for him. Now, next week, I'm going to be able to give you a, 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 an explanation, a, not an explanation, kind of a presentation of what we were able to do because we'll have all of this information finally compiled for, for what our impact and what we're going to be doing for Afghanistan, both, in, and I'll just kind of break it down. We're doing things for those that are in Afghanistan right now, for the believers, those that are in all of the, uh, the camps outside of Afghanistan, for refugees that are here in America, as well as you, Life Fellowship, because of your generosity, we're making an impact in what's happening with the effects of Hurricane Ida and even the uh, earthquake that happened in Haiti. And so I'm just telling you that we are impacting the world, not just here in North Dallas, not just in what's going to happen this new building, but literally around the world, and it's your generosity. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. So come on. Why don't you stand to your feet? Prayer teams are going to be here today to pray with you. So let's take our tithes and our offerings. The ways to give are on the screen. And so the Lord bless you. Lord, keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And all God's people say amen and amen. I love you, everybody. Hope you have a restful Labor Day weekend. God bless you. You're dismissed.